You know, normally we start the new employees at the New Orleans warehouse just to have them learn the ropes. Hello, how are you? So, when Frank got to New Orleans, I had Mariah teach them the ins and outs of working here at the rescue. When you wipe down the beds and the inside of the house, no one dries it off afterwards and it's all wet. It gets disgusting, so make sure you dry it. I'm Frank from Boston, Massachusetts. Thank you. Coming from a, you know, a whole nother state, you know, from Massachusetts, coming to Louisiana, you know, starting fresh, it, you know, it's, I'm excited, but I'm, I'm nervous. Check this out, I got something for you. Hey, come over here. I got something for you. This is a great opportunity for me. It's something that I love doing. My dog was a pit bull. You just do your eyes, you got all, you gonna have all the ladies. Pit bulls are loving loyal and they're looked at not in those ways by a lot of people you came from boston right okay yeah how long ago did you get out um i got out last week okay. how long yeah. you in for? almost like two and a half years okay and this is your first time in New i just keep going back and that's the problem let's not do that <laughs> it's been uh quite the uh about a decade now of just in and out of jails, a whole waste of little more than 10 years. I've been incarcerated for firearm, possession, uh, drug distribution, motor vehicle theft. I'm on unsupervised probation for two and a half years. If I violate, I'm going to jail for two and a half years. I think that after a while, and it happens with all of us, things become mundane and you like, you start to lose focus on where your original goals were. And I think that's the biggest thing that we're the dogs, that it keeps you focused on I it. Love them. I and love when I have it. a bad day, it fixes everything. I'm so focused. I've never felt, you know, so um so positive. Good. I basically have zero, a big fat goose egg right now, as far as things and, and finances. When I came to Ms. Torres, the fact that she was able to say, I'm you know, I'm gonna hire you. That was like a blessing from, from, from God and Miss Torres. Well, I'm glad you're here. If you need anything, don't be shy. I'll let you get back to kennels. I know Dylan yeah. needs help. Either way, glad nice you're to here. You. you too. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. It is extremely important to me that I do great here. <laughs> you go, baby. I have a 13-year-old boy, and he knows I got the job now. Come on, buddy. And he knows that I'm from the streets. And, and you know, I feel really like a piece of crap for the way I've behaved for these 13 years, you know? And I want to do something positive. This way, bud. Come on. Come on. I just want my son to be proud of me for something. Try and pull on that fence and make sure one of them can't get under it. OK. I like working with Mariah. She teaches me, you know, everything the right way. No cutting corners. We got this dog dropped off yesterday. Somebody found him over by Mishu. Okay. We need to scan him. Frank and I were doing kennels, and Elise called me and said that there was a dog that just got brought in. I'm gonna have Frank so he can come learn. I'm gonna have him come help. Yes, that would be Okay, perfect. We'll be out in a minute. Elise is out front with this dog right now. You, I'm gonna show you how to use a microchip scanner and stuff. So you wanna come out with me real quick? Um, oh, right there. So friggin' handsome. Hey, buddy. So sometimes the microchip, if they have them, they'll move like down in their shoulders. So you literally have to do it everywhere, but. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> I'm like, no, so they scan him right here, and this is, that's his microchip number. So we're gonna call the company and look that up. This is just like rescues and shelters have this. You go to the vet and they microchip your dog. That way, if like their collar comes off, anything, they get lost. yeah, in a shelter or anyone finds them, they they can still find you. I have a thing where I'll do something good for a whole week, and I'm like, yeah, I'm bored. So that's why this time around, when I was sitting in prison thinking about what it is I want to do with myself, I had to find something that I'd never get bored doing. He's also neutered. Looks like maybe like SPCA because he's got the Does tattoo. Does he have the mark, the tattoo? Yeah, he has the tattoo. Do you know about that? No. The SPCA, when they um, spay or neuter dogs, they do like a tiny little tattoo on them so that you know already that they are. Really? Mm -hmm. so Where's this tattoo? They're put them. Um, you can see it's right. like a tiny, tiny. It's on this side. He has one? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, the blue. See that blue mark right there inside his leg? Yeah. It's That's like, so that you know. Like a line? Uh huh. They tattoo him. They so do you it know. while they're sedated already. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't have a clue about that tattoo thing on the spade and neutered dogs. The more I learn stuff like that, I feel, you know, official here. Okay, what's the scan number? It's 982-126. Okay, let me look that up. Okay. Thank you for your help. It's an American Bulldog. Yes. Okay. Juice Capone. Juice Capone. <laughs> Juice Capone. Okay. When we called the microchip company, this dog had its name, a cell phone number, everything. Oh, and it just goes off, too. But the number wasn't working at all. We get dogs sent all the time that are microchipped. Sometimes people's dogs genuinely just get loose and they can't find them. Sometimes they can't care for them anymore and just dump them. So we'll keep trying the phone number that we have, but if no one comes forward, Juice will be a VRC dog and we will try and find him a forever home. I'll go put this back if you guys want to Microchip. Put him back. Thank Juice. you. Now you know how to do it. Come on. Yeah. Come on, big guy. Come on, buddy. Yeah, you're going to be all clean, aren't you? Yeah, you are. Since Juice got dropped off, we've been hanging out. Come here. All he wants to do is just play. He's so playful. Bet you can't catch me. <laughs> Come on, yeah, he's so cute. Yeah, you are, he's so cute. He's my buddy. Mwah. I think my son would love Juice. I know they would be a good match for each other. Hello? Hey. What's up, bud? What's up, dude? What you doing? I'm out here with Juice. You want to meet Juice Capone? Juice? Can you see him? Isn't he adorable? He's such a good boy. He's your big baby. How's it going? How's school going? My son's always been great in school, you know? And, and that's hard to get. You know, Dorchester's a rough neighborhood. There's so many gangs. It really scares me that he might take the wrong way. It was hard for me to just pick up and leave everything I know and come out here where I know nobody, and especially, you know, leaving you. And, uh, Better. Like, I don't want you to go back to jail, or like, I don't want you to end up doing something you're not supposed to on your free time. Making my son Jay Dell proud of me is so important to me right now, just because the type of life I've been living, you know, and, and the fact that my son sits back and observes all of that, you know. So, what kind of role model am I being for my own boy? What do I want him to follow in my footsteps? This is like a reset to like your life. It's a life, it's a life changing experience. It's like not everybody gets the opportunity to get a, a job or some type of income. And I just really want you to like take this serious. Everything he was saying was right on the money. But he is so smart. I'm really happy that you gave me this idea. And um, just want you to know that. I'm going to I'm going to do it. I'm going to you know, I'm going to get myself a little car, a nice little place. I'm going to get my life in order. It's very important that that I um that I make him proud of me. All right, I love you, buddy. All right, I love you too.